Okay, so let's take a look at a sample free response. This one comes from 2012. And so what we're looking at is a, essentially a T account, right? T account, we just looked at this in our notes. And so what we're looking at is a typical T account, a balance sheet is what they call it, for a bank. And this bank is called Mi Tierra Bank in the United States. So what you can see is that you have demand deposits in the amount of 100,000. You've got the 10,000 that the bank must hold, require reserves. They've got an excess reserve of 5,000, and they've made loans of 85,000. All right, so question number one, or part A, is a very simple question. You can see they start off with a very simple question. What is the reserve requirement? Well, 10,000 is 10% 10 of 100,000, right? Simple, 10,000 is 10% 10 of 100,000. Easy. Okay, so letter B says, assume that Lewis withdraws 5,000 in cash from his checking account at Meteora Bank. By how much will Meteora Bank's reserves change based on Lewis's withdrawals? Well, if he takes 5,000 out, then the bank's gonna have only 95,000 in demand deposits. And so it'll change by $5,000 because the bank is going to pay Lewis in reserves, right? And so where do they take that from? Well, they're gonna take that from their leftover or their excess reserves. So the excess reserves will go down to zero, right? They're gonna pay him that $5,000 that he asked for in their excess reserves. All right, okay, so letter II. What is the initial effect of the withdrawal on the M1 measure of the money supply? Well, think about it. Demand deposits are part of M1, right? They are part of M1. So if somebody takes out 5,000 or 10,000 or 20,000 or the full 100,000, it will have no effect on M1 because it's already a part of M1. So the answer is there'll be no change, no change on M1 money supply. Now notice here they ask you to explain. So you need to explain it. And the answer would be because the $5,000 is already a part of M1. So it's already part of the existing M1 money supply. It has no effect on the M1 measure of money supply. Okay, II3. As a result of the withdrawal, what is the new value of the excess reserves on the balance sheet of Meteor Bank based on the reserve requirement from Part A? Okay, well, it'd be tempting to say zero because they paid out the $5,000 to this person that took out the $5,000. But because now the demand deposit has fallen to 95,000, they no longer have to hold 10,000, right? How much do they have to hold? They have to hold 9,500. All right, so to make this side balance up to this side, we have to balance out the excess reserves. So they have now an additional 500 bucks in their excess reserves because they only have to hold 9,500 to compensate for the 95,000 in demand deposits. That leaves them with an extra 500 out of their original 10,000. Okay, so the answer here would be 500. Letter C. Assume that the next day, John withdraws from Meteor Bank an amount that exceeds the bank's excess reserves. Assuming that no loans are called in, how can Meteor Bank cover its required reserves? What can the bank do? The bank has a lack of liquidity. They can either borrow from the lender of last resort, which is the Fed. They can either borrow from the Fed or they can borrow from a member bank, right? Another bank. So if they borrow from the Fed, so if they borrow from the Fed, what rate would they pay? They would pay the discount rate. If they borrow from a member bank, what rate would they pay? They'd pay the federal funds rate. All right, so this is a sample look at how College Board will ask you questions relative to the Federal Reserve and a T account. And we'll practice more of these in class, but for right now, just sort of absorb that. That's the type of question they'll ask you.